right now. I'm just kidding. Totally kidding. Not kidding. Because look at me. <laughs> if you guys didn't guess already by that intro and by the name of this video, obviously, today's video is going to be a 1920s inspired tutorial. Um, I am going to a gala, actually, to perform with my swing dance troupe tonight. It is a gala at the Cantil Casino in Saratoga. It's like a super, like, fancy schmancy benefit. And I am going to be performing there. So I had to dress up in 1920s because the theme is Roaring Twenties. So as you can see, I'm dressed like a flapper girl. <laughs> you guys don't know what a flapper is. Basically, I'm gonna Google that. If you guys don't know what a flapper is, basically what that is, is a fashionable young woman intent on enjoying herself and flouting conventional standards of behavior. So basically they were like the it girls of the 1920s. Basically they were like the trendsetters of the 1920s. You would see them at fancy parties, at dances, at clubs, that sort of thing. So that's what a flapper is, if you guys don't know already. Um, yeah, this hair is hot. <sighs> this makeup tutorial is 100% authentically inspired by the 1920s. I know a lot of people get the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s all kind of mixed up um, in one sort of era. So when you think of it, you think red lips and wing liner, but honestly, that's not what 20s is at all. 20s is pink cheeks, red lips, smoky eye, um, believe it or not. <laughs> so that's what I did for this tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoy it. And if you want to know how to get this look, maybe for Halloween, if you happen to be going to a dancing gala where you have to dress up like a 20s person, you can watch this. But yeah, if you want to know, then just keep watching and you'll stay in the know. Yeah. Hey guys! So, we're going to get started with this tutorial. Look at me, I painted my nails. And also, my hair is setting in curls. That's why it looks so weird. And I know my Batman shirt's not very 1920s, but we're just going to ignore that. So now, let's start with our face. In the 1920s, they had very, very matte skin, which is hard if you have dry skin because it makes your face feel like crap. So I'm going to be using the hydrating primer so that way when I do make my foundation matte it's not going to look cakey or nasty and I'm also going to be using the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer to smooth out all my pores and give me a nice smooth base. And then for my eyebrows, in the 1920s they had nice thin eyebrows that extended down very far. My eyebrows are not like that so I just filled them in as thin as possible. Now I am going to be priming my eyes and I'm using the e.l.f. glitter primer. Normally I would use a regular primer or even a concealer, but I want my eyeshadow to stay on for a very long time, so I'm using this. And then I'm using the Catrice um, Liquid Camouflage Concealer over that, which actually kind of bunched up with the primer. So if you're going to be using the e.l.f. glitter glue as a primer, don't put concealer over it because it did not work as well as I thought it was going to. Then I'm just setting it with a translucent powder. You can set it with any powder, a skin tone powder, anything. We're just doing this to keep it nice and smooth. Now I'm taking this uh, Morphe eyeshadow shade. I forget what it's called, but I will put it in the description bar or maybe even on the screen. I might have it on the screen. But I'm taking this BH Cosmetics brush and I'm going to be using that to blend it. Um, in the end, I wish I kind of hadn't done this because it added a little bit too much brown to the look, I thought. But I just wanted to add some sort of transition shade and this is a nice cool tone, gray tone sort of color. Now I'm taking this um, Bella uh, Milani Bella Eyes eyeshadow in the shade Bella Silver and I'm just taking an e.l.f. blending brush and blending this all over my lid and into my crease. In the 1920s they really liked their grays and their blacks because Egypt and ancient Egypt that was all the rage at the time so they were obsessed with the sort of smoky black look. So that's what I'm doing here. Then I'm taking this e.l.f. Long Lasting Lustrous eyeshadow in the, shade, in the shade Celebration, I believe. 
and I'm going to be packing this all over my eye. It's a really pretty shimmery charcoal gray color and I'm just going to be using my finger because these apply best with the finger, I believe. You can use any shimmery gray shadow you have, anything will work. Then I'm taking that same e.l.f. blending brush and again just blending everything out. This look just requires a lot of layering and blending because there aren't too many shadows in it. So I'm just taking that fluffy brush from before, blending it out, and then I'm going to go on to eyeliner. So again, because in the 1920s everyone was obsessed with ancient Egypt because of all the discoveries going on over there, um, they really liked their smoky coal liner. So I'm just taking this Rimmel one and then I'm smoking it out using an e.l.f. smudge brush like so. Um, a lot of people think that the winged liner flick was a thing during this time, but it wasn't. That didn't come until like the 30s and the 40s. So they were just very into very smoky eye looks and everybody loved makeup in the 1920s. It was a huge rage. So they like to pack it on, which I think is great. So I'm just going to be smoking that out again on the other eye, making it look nice and smoky. This will also make your eyes look nice and big and defined too. So just taking that blending brush with a little bit more of the gray shadow on it and again just blending and blending and blending. Now I'm going back over with some of the celebration color just to darken everything up because I feel like it kind of blended away and then I'll just keep blending it and then packing it on again that sort of thing. Now I'm going to be tight lining and also that was my mom not a ghost in the background <laughs> but anyways I'm going to be tight lining my eyes and look I got it on my lid but don't worry don't worry we can totally fix that so we're going to be taking a q-tip just taking it off and then reapplying the eyeshadow and look all fixed so now I'm going to be applying some mascara and then some Ardell Demi Wispies which I applied off camera so now I'm going to be cleaning out my under eyes and the reason why we did our eyes first is look at that look at all that black if we had not done our eyes first that would be all over our under eyes so in the 1920s, pale, perfect, porcelain looking skin was all the rage. So I'm going to be mixing the L'Oreal Pro Glow and the Revlon Colorstay foundations together because they're my favorite foundations at the moment. But I am going to be going a little bit lighter with my foundation than I normally would. I would normally go like a half a shade darker, but I wanted to go a little bit lighter um, because I want to have that nice light colored skin. But I didn't want to look crazy, you know what I mean? So I'm just blending that in using my Real Techniques sponge, like always. Um, and yeah, now I'm going to be taking two concealers, the Maybelline one and the Catrice one. Yes, I did smell it. I'm sorry, I really like the smell of this concealer. I don't know. So I'm going to be applying the Catrice one just a little bit and then applying the Maybelline one because it is very nice and light. And I'm going to be applying that all in the areas that I would highlight and blending that out. Again, using this concealer that's a little bit lighter will help with the brightening porcelain style skin that was very, very popular during that time. So yeah, I'm just going to blend that out using my sponge as well. Here we go, awkward dance break. Yep, yep, get a girl. So now I'm going to be taking this hard to open eyeshadow. This is another Milani Bella Eyes eyeshadow. I believe it's Bella Diamond. I'm going to be using this to highlight my brow bone. And now I'm taking my Cody Airspun Powder. And I'm just going to be taking this and setting my under eyes using my Real Technique sponge. I'm not baking. I am just setting it. I didn't feel like baking today. So I am just setting. And then I'm also taking that powder and applying it all over my face with a fluffy brush to really get that nice matte finish. So now I'm going to be taking this Wet n Wild um, duo in uh, Dolce de Leche and I'm just going to be using that to highlight my under eyes and other areas where I put concealer just a little bit more. I feel like I need a little bit more highlight. And then I'm going to be taking this same smudge brush and I go out of the frame here a few times but basically what I'm doing is just smudging some more of that black eyeliner underneath my um, lash line, mostly on the outer like third outer half. Of it and then I'm taking that celebration shade and smudging that underneath then taking a pencil brush and blending everything out this is gonna give your eyes a very nice wide appearance but still keep it smoky if you know what I mean then I'm taking that um, Bella Diamond shade and just putting that in my inner corners for a bit of a highlight then I'm taking the next jumbo pencil in milk and putting that on the outer part of my lash line just to waken up my eyes so they don't look too raccoony now I'm gonna put on some mascara which again I go out of frame on I'm sorry my um, angles were not so great kind of in a rush because I was getting ready and yeah 
So anyways, bronzing and contouring was really not a thing during the 1920s. They preferred like porcelain skin and pink cheeks, but I feel like I need just a little bit of dimension to my face. So I'm taking that contour shade from that Wet n Wild duo and just applying it very, very slightly on my cheekbones and on my forehead and my chin. So now I'm taking these two e.l.f. blushes in Sweet Retreat and Jet Setter, and I'm going to be applying my blush. Now in the 1920s, they did not do the angled back blush like we do now. They applied it right to the apples of the cheeks and blended it slightly backwards. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm applying it very heavily on the apples and then just blending it back slightly so I don't look too crazy, but you want to apply it more forward in your face. That'll give your face a rounder effect, which they really liked back then. So now I'm taking this e.l.f. highlighting palette and I'm just going to be highlighting my cheekbones just a little bit. This highlight is so subtle and again, they liked matte skin so we're really into highlight. That wasn't even really invented yet, I don't think. So that's why I'm just doing it a little bit to give some dimension but not too much. Now I'm just setting my face using the Avene Thermal Spring Water and the Model in a Bottle Setting Spray and yeah. So now for my lips, I'm going to be whiting them out with some foundation because I'm actually going to be drawing a new lip shape. The lip shape that was very popular in the 1920s was sort of a rosebud, sort of small, snow white looking lip, if you know what I mean. And the Cupid's bow was very, very, very emphasized. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm really defining my Cupid's bow. And then when I draw in my lips, I don't draw in the bottom lip as much because my lips are pretty full on the bottom. Um, so I don't want to make them look too, too full. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. I did go out of the frame here again. I'm really sorry. But when you come up, you can see that I didn't fill it in all the way. And I tried to kind of extend it to make it look more like a heart shape. If you see here. Then I'm going to be putting this Wet n Wild lipstick. Um, I forget the name of it, but again, it'll be on the screen and in the down bar. And I'm just going to be applying this, this nice scarlet shade. And then I'm taking Maybelline Are You Ready? Um, red lipstick and applying that over. These lasted all night, by the way. I was so surprised. I did not have to reapply them. It was fantastic. So yeah, that's it for this video, you guys. I really hope you guys like this, and I will see you later. Mwah! So that was it for this video, you guys. I hope you guys like it. Please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Down below, subscribe. And yeah, keep out for more videos if you guys like my doing like themed sort of makeup looks if you want me to do like a 1950s or 60s inspired or 30s, 40s, that sort of thing. If you want me to do another like uh, time period sort of inspired makeup, please let me know. So yeah, hope you guys like this video. <laughs> Bye guys. They would be the ones that you see at like parties and like rocking out and like, uh, uh, uh. yeah, no, I have no idea. No, not that. But basically they were like, the like fancy, like daredevils, like, you know, that's not a good way to describe it. shopping I went to five below I went to Walmart and I went to TJ Maxx um, and I got some new makeup and some of this stuff I've